Hi, this is Neil Walters with biztalk-training.com. Welcome to our course that is now dedicated completely to the business rule engine. This is the brief outline that we're going to do. And basically, I've been working with the business rule engine for several years now. And on the last project, we used it extensively when we built an enterprise service bus, an ESB system. And we built what's called itineraries or agendas using the business rules. And what we're going to look at, first of all, is just the SDK samples that come with BizTalk. You may have looked at those before. If you have, you might want to skip on to the next video. But uh, this, I'm assuming that this is ground level zero. You've never seen anything about the business rules before. So we're going to start at the very beginning. And so there are a couple of SDK examples here. The first two are actually just C-sharp examples. So we're going to save that for a future chapter. Right now, I want to show you how it works at BizTalk. So there is a loan processing example and a medical claims processing example. And these are found, of course, the SDK. When you install BizTalk, most people include it. It's program files, Microsoft BizTalk server, SDK samples, then business rules, and then under business rules here, you'll see the four different projects that you can open. Now each of these projects has a setup. So if I go here to like the loan processing, I'll see a setup.bat. So what I want to do is go to that directory in a command prompt window. And the reason I do it here is if for some reason the setup fails, it's a little easier to read the messages. The, the command prompt window might close if you just double click on it from the Windows Explorer. And so we do a right click, I mean sorry, I just uh, type in setup.bat and I'm going to pause the video while this runs. Okay, first of all there's a big problem here. Um, for some reason they're still using the Northwind database and I've installed SQL 2005 which no longer includes the Northwind or the pubs database it includes the AdventureWorks database so you can still download the uh, former two Northwind and pubs databases from the web so if you go to Google and you can look up SQL 2005 Northwind database download I believe it's still on a Microsoft site and you can download these two databases together just click the download button here. Sorry, I need to turn off that little security there for the browser. So we're going to save this uh, MSI to the disk. Put it in my documents. And we can just go ahead and run it. Just click Next. I agree. Let's just double check this. Yeah, it will be installed. Okay, Next. And Close. Okay, now what's not so obvious is where it's going to put the files when you run the MSI. And it puts them here in this directory called C colon SQL Server 2000 Sample Database. And here is your Northwind and your Pubs database. So now to be able to get this database accessible, we're going to go to the SQL 2005 Server Management Studio and we're going to attach them. Okay, I looks like my SQL Server was down and so maybe running that MSI maybe takes your SQL down. So I had to go to admin services and actually start my database. So from here I want to go to databases and then do the task called attach. Then from here you click add. Then you go to your disk and you find the data you want to add which we learned a while ago was under C colon SQL 2000 sample databases. Click Northwind and click OK. And then the only thing is there was an OK button that was kind of hanging off the screen there. And so what I did is I expanded the screen to full size and now we can see the OK button. So now you just click OK. It takes four or five seconds and now you do have the Northwind database available. 
So now we're going to go back here and rerun that setup program and hopefully it will, uh, running it twice will not hurt the other stuff that we did. So you see this was the part we missed before, creating sample table and populating with sample data. So now if we go look in our database over here, let's click here tables, refresh. One of these tables I believe was created by this uh, little setup utility. If we open the little setup.bat file, you see here it ran a script, an SQL script using the OSQL command line and it, it called it was called create customer info table. And if we go look at that script, it's right here. We could actually open that and run it ourselves. Let's open it with Notepad. You can see it creates a table called customer info. And then it alters some keys and it inserts three sets of values, a one, a two, and a three. So something to do with credit card balance. So we go over here and look at customer info and right click and say open table. You can see the balances that these various customers owe. And so now we want to open the solution to see what this is going to do. So right here, let's click on the SLN file called Loan Processor SLN. And we can also go to BizTalk here, the BizTalk Admin Console, refresh our applications, and you should see the Loan Processor here as well. So this will tell you the orchestrations that, that are involved. And it created something called Microsoft Samples BizTalk Loan Processor my sample service. Notice we also have a receive location here where we can drop a flat file and it's going to be in our disk right here in the sample directory itself. It's a long file name so it's going to be called in and then there's going to be a little out directory as well. So the name of the out directory is the business rule loan processing using business rules out and then the message ID. So now let's look at the solution here. So we have a schema called case and you see the name, the customer ID, his income, uh, how long has he lived at his current address, etc and then his income status, employee, and residency status. And then our orchestration will receive this file and then basically use the call business rule engine shape here. If we double click that, you see we're going to pass the incoming message to the business rule engine and the business rule is going to be called loan processing. So now let's go look at what that business rule is going to do. So we're going to open the business rule composer now. Uh, I don't have it pinned over here yet, so we're going to go to uh, Microsoft BizTalk server. And since I'm going to be using this tool quite often now in this uh, series of demos, I'm going to copy it to my um, start menu here. Uh, the first time you use it, it's going to ask you to connect to a certain database. Just click OK. And in the upper left corner or window pane, you see the policies that are currently uh, either in development or deployed on your machine. The only policy we currently have is this one called loan processing which is related to this sample SDK application. So back to the schema for a minute. What this uh, business rule is going to be doing is setting these four statuses here. Commitment, income, employment, and residency status. So let's go back to the rule now. So this is uh, called the policy here. The ver the, this is the policy, loan processing. And you'll see shortly that we'll, as soon as you change it, you'll have many different versions of the same policy. You have a commitment status rule. So in the upper left side here, we have the basically your if statement, your conditions. And notice there is never an else statement here. So if these things are true, then the following actions will occur. So we have here if Northwind customer info ID is equal to Microsoft BizTalk Loan Processor Case Root ID, 
and, so the and, this is um, kind of like a hierarchical structure. So your and applies these two variables because they're under the and. And the credit card balance is greater than 500. Then the action is going to be set the commitment status to compute commitments. Then we have an employee rule status. Basically says if the time and months that he's been employed is greater than 18, we're going to set the employee the employment status to employee employment status is valid. Then we have an income rule. The income rule says if his salary is greater than zero and his other income is greater than zero, then his income status is valid. So the business rule sometimes can be used to clean or scrub your incoming data. And so if someone has well, it seems like this is kind of a strange rule. Some people might not have other income. They may have a basic salary, but they may have no additional income. So their other income might be zero. But according to this rule, they both have to have a salary and some other income. Okay, now we have a negation of commitments rule. So down here, it's we might want to turn and say commitment status is ignore commitments. So if if this is true, and not this. So if the North Wind customer ID is equal to this root ID and not credit balance greater than 500, you're going to say ignore commitments. And then if not the time in months greater than 18, we covered another rule that said if it was greater than 18, now this is the rule that says it's not greater than 18, we're not going to give them a loan because they haven't worked at the same place 18 months, which is kind of an oversimplified rule, but that's this rule that we were given here in the SDK. And so all these kind of work the same. So to see this thing actually run, what we're going to do is go back to the SDK here, and you see the in and the out directory, and then they always give you a sample loan. So let's open the sample loan in the browser, and you can see this person's ID. They don't have a name. Uh, they have a basic salary, other income. They've been employed three months and they've lived in the same place for 15 months. So we're going to take that file and we're going to copy it and paste it into the end directory. And as long as our uh, ports and everything are started, let's go over here and check our receive locations. It is green so it's enabled. So that file should be picked up and be running by now. So if we go to the input directory, it's still there. While it's being, oh, BizTalk may not actually be started itself. Because SQL was down a few minutes ago. So I'm going to go to two things. I'm going to go to services here just to show you another trick. Um, the place I used to work, sometimes we, we used actually VMware. We would come in on Mondays and some of our services weren't started. So you want to make sure, of course, SQL is running. And if SQL ever goes down, there's another service right here called the Rule Engine Update Service. And since this is a course about business rules, you want to make sure that this uh, business rule, Rule Engine Update Service, is started. And now BizTalk itself and the SSO, SSO is called Enterprise SSO. You notice that's not started, so I'm going to start it right now. And that has to be started before BizTalk. And then here's our BizTalk service. Uh, you would actually have one service here for every application host, or every host instance that you have. So now BizTalk is going, so we should see that file get picked up fairly quickly. Okay, the file has now been consumed. And just to see what's going on, we're going to use hat as usual. In hat, I usually do query most recent 100 instances. This will just give me the big picture whether this uh, ran or not. So today is March 16th. You can see we received a file through the receive pipeline. The orchestration ran and it wrote some file back to disk. So we're going to go to the output directory now here. And we'll open that in the browser. Now compare our input file to our output file. Um, Let's go back and look at our input file one more time. Let's close this window. Okay, 
So our input file was here called sample loan. And you notice that these four statuses are all empty. Okay? And then after we run it, we'll open the output file again here. All these four statuses have now been filled in for us. So if this was a more robust business rule, it might actually tell us whether this person qualified for the loan or not. But I think in what they're doing here is just trying to show you that you can uh, scrub your data and you can say, okay, based on the data he sent me, is everything valid? And if any of these are not valid, then the orchestration could basically quit and then let someone correct their data and then resubmit it. So that concludes our basic introduction. In the next video, we'll come back and show you how you can test this policy in the Business Rule Composer and how you can test and trace it uh, after you've run the orchestration.